Good morning. I'm Yanni the Greek coming to you live straight from Las Vegas. It's Wednesday, July 31st. And we got some early Major League Baseball action. In fact, surprised the betting syndicates didn't get down on a lot of action early on. The only side we did bet was Milwaukee at plus money. So coin flip game, get plus money, plus EV there. We'll see how that turns out. I released it, I believe, 3% play. Um, with that said, we're coming off a day where we went one game under 500, three and four overall, but lost a little bit more because San Francisco was juiced. So uh, see if we could grind that back tonight. Got to keep this one really quick because I do have a UFC uh, podcast today, The Gambler's Perspective, going for my 10th straight win. I will see if I'm going to use the 4% play that I already released to subscribers as the best bet this week. We will see. Make sure you check that out only on UFC Fight Pass. Now, today's premium play, I'll keep that quick as well. Let's go into uh, Dodger San Diego. We're going to play that game under. Went under 7.5 and, and also went under 7. 3% play. We don't bet 3% because we don't want a, a high risk of ruin. We bet 0.25 of that because we want about a 20% risk of ruin where we know we're going to double our bankroll at least 8 out of 10 times and lose it less than 2 out of 10 times. Don't go betting 3%, 4%, 5% of your bankroll on a play because you're working into the 90% risk of ruin range. That's with an edge. Um, so be cautious with that. So we're going to go under in the Dodgers and San, uh, San Diego. Cut off a high score in game one. Uh, but if you look the previous series, these were under teams uh, when they meet up. And uh, looking at this pitching matchup, looks like another under game. So a little recency bias off of yesterday's high scoring uh, 6-5 final. Now let's get to some of these questions real quick and pick up one or two as quickly as we can. Remember, we could talk, chop it up on Manek as long as you like and get into uh, whatever detailed stuff you uh, would like to talk about. Now, thank you, Huck. Great stuff. Let's keep grinding. He said, you think 2029 crash could come early? All signs of point the recession for years now, but the S&P hit all times high. Yep, people are ignoring the $35 trillion in debt. Only a matter of time before this negative orb gets too big. Give us your thoughts. Yes, sir. It's the truth. Listen, I believe at 2029, 2030, the crash is coming. That's that 100-year cycle. Um, the math just lines up that way. And I, I don't think we're going to be able to avoid that. But do I think it gets bad well before that? Absolutely. And I think that's going to happen probably later this month. We start to see the first signs of the chaos erupt. Mark down August 19th on your calendar, August 19th. Mark that day down. Um, and I think that's going to continue through the end of the year. And I don't think it's going to get better. I think 2025 will be horrific, um, but we will come out of that. They're going to turn on the printing presses. They're going to just print. They're going to 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 try to bring down those interest rates. They're going to say, fuck it. Inflation, inflation. Who gives a shit? Let's print, let's print, let's print, let's print. We need to get voted back in. Let's print, let's print, let's print, let's print. And that's when at the end of the decade, we're going to eat it because you're going to see 2027, 2028. People are going to say, yeah, good time. See that? It's back, baby. Another 20 years of low interest, high uh, profitability assets going through the roof. I don't think that's going to be the case. You can only kick the can down the road for so much. You can only be the world's reserve currency for so long. We saw it when it switched between the uh, pound to the U.S. dollar. What happened? It took decades. We had to go through world wars before that happened. So it's not going to happen overnight. But I believe we're already in that, like Ray Dalio said, the seventh inning. Like this has been happening now for a while. We're seeing it happen with the BRICS, where they're trying to create a new way to trade, where they're either going to have a basket of commodities or it's going to be backed by gold once again. Um, you're, taught, you're hearing Bitcoin being thrown out there. I don't think that's what's going to be any kind of reserve currency. Not for, not in my lifetime, at least. Maybe in, in some of your lifetimes, not in my lifetime. Things would have to get so horrific um, for the Bitcoin standard to actually come into play within the next 20 to 40 years, I think. Um just because there's just, it's the gold, gold, right? Yeah, I mean, again, you, the, the central banks haven't been hoarding all this gold by accident over the last two, three years. And they haven't ramped it up over the last two, three months by accident. Um, uh, Michael uh, 
what's his name from the big short, just put 7%, seven and a half percent of his portfolio in gold, in physical, in sprouts, I believe. So he put 7%, not two or three, 7%. You're talking billions of dollars of uh, assets under management. And my man's putting 7%. So you know what he's expecting. And if you look at the rest of his portfolio, he's invested in prisons. In, Of course, when, when, when chaos ensues, what happens? You need the prisons. In energy, energy is going to be so scarce. That's why that shit matters. It's going to happen. What we've seen, whenever there's been civil unrest, civil wars, uh, empires crumbling, uh, reserve currency changing, what has happened? Everyone says the exact same thing. We never saw it coming. We never saw it coming. We never saw it coming. That's what everyone says. Nobody saw this coming. And yet, it came. So, uh, yeah, I do think we're in for it over these next 18 months. Um, Will it come exactly now in August? I don't know. That's what the charts appear to me. That's what they look like. That's what even, um, you see that special calendar uh, calculator back there. That's what it's telling me. And uh, when I look at the planetary alignment, that's also what it's telling me. Um, the mid end of the, Towards the end of this month is, is when the things are going to get bad. And uh, most notably, August 19th is one of those days that sh may shine. Um, negatively. So yeah, just buckle in, buckle in. You know what to do. Everyone knows what to do. It's, it's, are you going to prepare yourself and are you going to do it? It's like I said, with the six pack, I know how to get it. I don't have it though. Like this, you know what to do. Will we get there? We'll see. Oh, I have another one. You know, I, I trade with other traders. I share information. One guy, uh, bet a CFL play. Uh, I'm going to look into it. I haven't vetted it yet myself. It's Calgary, Calgary minus three, Calgary minus three. All right. Now, let's see. Any other question? Any other question? All right. James QQ. Tournament blackjack strategy. Love it. Shove. Shove, shove, shove. It, it comes down to luck. It really does. Um, there's no real strategy. I mean, other than looking at what the other players have and as far as uh, chips go. And, and trying to, the, the goal is to amass as many as you can. The only way that's going to happen is to shove. Like you can't be afraid to shove. Um, that, that, when I came in second in a, actually I won a blackjack tournament at Red Rock back in the day. That's what I did. There was, I mean, I did some counting and, and the, the count was in my favor. So I was shoving, um, but it came down to the shove. It really did. There's no real um, strategy to those things. It's like slot tournaments. Sorry. All right. Looks like that's about it. The rest, we got some a uh, lot of long ones and and uh, got to do the gambler's perspective in like 30 minutes. So I want to get this out to you guys. Love you. Have a great day. Enjoy the games. Don't forget, smash that like button, comment, share, so we can keep this going. Football is just around the corner.